hello guys uh, we are back again with the third session of blue prism tutorial uh, so today uh, in the last session we saw uh, about the blue prism tool about different components available in blue prism tool and we also discussed about rpa in general so today we will start our actual training wherein we will see the process studio and we will also create a process we will try to run a process we will see some examples and we will see how to delete a process okay so let's get started so as we saw earlier as well this is our process this is the studio section of blue prism software and we discussed uh, there are two sections in the studio processes and objects now processes are uh, like the main program in any programming language they contain the business logic basically and objects can be treated as you know just a similarity between any functions in any programming language and objects exist so objects can be treated as functions in a programming language processes are like the main function of of any programming language so objects are also used to interact with applications which we are going to implement uh, which we are going to automate and we will see more about objects later in our tutorial so today we will concentrate on processes so you see currently we don't have anything in the processes so to create a process you need to right click on the processes and you can create a process by clicking on create process right so let's do it so if you click on right uh, create process uh, wizard will open up which will say enter the name of the process so let's put in a name my first process right next it asks for a description of the process so it's a good practice to provide this meaningful description for your process though it is not necessary to provide a description we will just put test process for demonstration use and we will click on finish so now you see you have got my first process inside the processes so this is the process and here you will see the revision history of this process whenever you save we will see that in a minute so let's get started so you can click double click on this my first processes process which you created right now and it will open a studio so this is the studio or the designer or the work uh, the, the pane wherein you will create the workflow so there are several components to it this is normal you know file when you will use to save backup print export normal things edit is again the same like any ms uh, microsoft office uh, application the same things you will see here right something new debug we will see that go step step out step over pause reset all these things are also available uh, in this section you know it looks like a dvd player right so for now we will just concentrate on this go button it's like a play button and this is the reset button to reset the flow right okay. so on the left hand side you can see all the stages available here so all these highlighted items are called as stages so for example this is an action stage this is a decision stage this is a choice stage then calculation stage and data item collection loop etc etc so we will see all of these working in our future videos so meanwhile we will concentrate on what we have now so you might have noticed when we created this process we got these three stages by default one is the start end and the information stage right so start stage by the name it signifies this is the point from where our workflow will start and end stage is the point where our workflow will end right and this information stage is used to uh, you know, 
provide information about this process like you can have my first process the name over here this was the description which we gave who created it created by admin at this time last changed by admin at this time when you double click on this information stage you can specify conditions over here and you can put some more information over here more about these things these options later in our tutorial so meanwhile <coughs> we have a start stage we have an end stage so now let's try to link start and end to link you see here on the left side you have a link button over here when you click on link you just click on the start hold your left click and drag to the end stage right and then release the left click now you see the start and end are connected correct so to run this process you go again to the pointer right to run this process you have the go button over here you just click on go you see how it gets highlighted did you mark so let's do it slowly to do it slowly just adjacent to the go button there is a small downwards arrow when you click on it you see three types of debug speed fast normal and slow so let's go slowest right so that you are able to visualize so now when i play again see what happens nothing happens because our highlight our uh, currently the end stage is highlighted so you have to reset this workflow to reset you click on this reset button right now when i play you see it started from start and ended at end right so this is how a process is run and you also saw the usage of reset button to reset the marker or you know to reset the marker to the initial position or to the start stage that is the reset button right just adjacent to the reset button you have errors if you have any errors in your workflow you will be able to see all the errors and warnings here so just click on errors you will see some error or warning if any so let's create a warning or error and we will be able to see the errors <coughs> sorry so i will just remove this uh, connector and let's refresh the workflow you see one error came up so when you click on error what does it say it says on the page named as main page on the stage name start there is an error which is a validation error and it says missing link and repairable is no that means it cannot be automatically repaired by blue prism so you have to take action so this error itself says on the start stage there is a validation error with missing link right so if you click on go to stage so it will show you where the error is actually present see start is highlighted right so let's close this and again link back from start to end right now when i refresh this error vanishes correct so this is very useful while debugging your flow whatever you are creating right so let's see some more examples before that let's try to delete these stages okay i click on control a so it selects everything right i press control a it selects everything and i press a delete button on my keyboard you see everything gets deleted but you ca you can never delete this start or this information stage remember this start stage and information stage are the only two stages which can never be deleted from a process so you right click on it you see there is no delete option right you left uh, you right click on start there is no delete option correct so let me just show you something else i picked up a calculation stage so you saw how easy it is just drag and drop to the pane anything you want you can drag and drop right easy so if i try to delete this decision 
let's see here yeah, delete is highlighted so we can delete it we can delete the calculation as well we can delete every other stage but not the start and information stage so i just do a control a again press on delete okay <coughs> now let's see some basics so let's start with a calculation right so this is a calculation stage right so what i want to do i want to let's say set value of a data item data items are nothing but variables to 7 okay so for that what we will require i took a calculation stage right so we'll require a variable in which we will store the value so variables are termed as data item here in blue prism so you drag a data item right you double click on it you will see this thing this properties window so i name it as variable z description is you write something variable to contain data right then there are some inbuilt data types which blue prism supports when you click on it you see it can be a date date time flag number password text time time span image binary so these are all the data types that blue prism support so for us it is a number so i will put number initial value we don't want to initialize this data uh, this variable so i will not give anything exposure we'll talk about this later in the training current value is the value which is currently stored in this particular variable so currently it is nothing so we will not do anything just put create a data uh, data uh, type data item named as z and give the data type as number and click on okay right so now in the calculation stage when you open up when you double click on the calculation stage the properties opens up i give the name as let's say set z description is set z to a numeric value okay now expression what can i write in expression we need to set the value of z to let's say 7 so i will simply write 7 and you see here there is a option called as store result in where do you want to store the result we created a data item named as z so we have to store the result in z right so when you go uh, navigate to the right hand side you see here in numbers you have a plus symbol when you expand it you see all the variables created in this particular page or which are available to this particular page so since z is in the scope of this page z is available over here right so i can simply drag this z put it to store result in this is one way of doing it okay so what are the other ways of doing it we will see right or else i can directly write z over here it will identify the variable z okay so these functions we will see later in our training what are the usage of these functions okay so for now we have to set the name we have to put the expression what we want to set or what we want to do for that particular variable in our case we just wanted to assign 7 to a variable named as z right so we created a data a data item named as z numeric type we stored the result in that particular variable or data item and we click done okay right so uh, we will have to end the workflow as well so we will take a end stage just drag and drop now we have to link it to make it meaningful so from start to set z and set z to end i repeat from start to set z set z to end now this link you have to take a link from here you have to click on start don't release the left click drag till the next stage and then release right so that's how you use the link now when i, I run it to run it i need to refresh reset the values and then click on go so let's see what happens so you mark here you see z equal to 7 has come now without resetting if i just open this z the current value is 
initial value we did not give anything right now if i refresh it z will be again null so let's change the initial value of z let's say i put initial value as 10 so that you are able to visualize better now when i refresh the workflow z shows a value of 10 correct and i run the workflow let's go a bit fast i don't want now a uh, slow right you see you see it overrides the value of z to 7 okay make sense right when i double click again you see the initial value was 10 the current value is 7 okay so that's about the calculation stage now what else can be done we also saw uh, that we we can also perform arithmetic calculations string calculations anything using this calculation stage so let's say we want to do 7 plus 3 and store it in a variable named as y now remember we don't have a data item uh, created for the variable y so i told you i will give you another way to create a variable right so you write here y and just click here to automatically create a data item of the required type using the name in this field when you click here what happens a new data item named as y is created with the casting information already evaluated so you know when you evaluate this expression 7 plus 3 the output will be 10 which is a number so y will be created with a number data type right so let's see and if it is being created see when i click here a new variable is created y correct now it's good practice always to whenever you write an expression just validate it if you click on validate it says your expression is valid that means it is just checking for your syntax errors it does not change for your logic if any syntax related errors are there it will give you an error okay so let's see uh, 7 plus 3 plus let's say character a now it should give a syntax error right your expression does not appear to be valid you can only add a number to a number correct got it the usage of validation okay so we will do again 7 plus 3 now it's also a good debugging practice to you know evaluate the expression when you validate it gives the expression is valid when you click on evaluate expression it says expression result equal to 10 which is a number right so that means our expression is good now when i click on ok you see here this y is already created just to show you the uh, value contains i will double click on y you see it is the name y data type is number no initial value current value also null so everything is null so i refresh it so now what should happen i will rename it to set y so that you don't get confused so let's rename set y okay so now when i reset and run you see the content is stored in y correct now we can also do one more thing so what we will do in calculation stage let's say i will remove everything let's make it blank make it blank everything is blank now let's say we want to perform addition of two particular numbers so we have two numbers y and z right so we want to perform addition of those correct so let's name it addition now we have to write an expression containing variables the best way to do this drag and drop drag this y put it in expression plus you want z as well take z as well just drag and drop very easy right now we want to store result in sum is a variable which will store the result and i will click here to automatically create the variable sum right okay now when i will run this what will happen any guesses it will tell that we cannot add the reason being y was null we did not initialize y so let's give a value to y as well 
let's make it 20 so we have z equal to 10 y equal to 20 so we will receive sum as 30 let's see if it happens right able to see so that's how you use the calculation stage correct now let's say we want to check if sum is less than 50 then do something and if sum is greater than 50 do something so basically we want to take a decision based on if else right so we can use this decision node over here so in the decision node you double click it opens almost similar just the difference is there is no store result in because we don't store result in a if else statement it's just it just returns true or false correct so what do you want to check we want to check some less than 50 correct so we'll name it is some less than 50 right so i click on ok so i will link it after doing the addition it should check for sum if it is less than 50 then it should end here let's say here so you see when you click on the decision and connect it to the next stage that is automatically the yes branch and if no then go to this branch you don't have to specify basically okay so what we are doing just a review we are going to add two numbers y and z store it in a variable sum if sum is less than 50 then it should end up here right if sum is greater than 50 then it should end up here so let's see where it ends up refresh and run it okay make sense so this is how you use the decision stage as well okay so one more property of decision stage is you can also switch this yes and no links right you have to right click on decision and click on switch so earlier this particular branch was the yes branch now it has become the no branch and this branch was the no branch which has become yes branch so they have changed the branch okay so that's the usage of switch so when we run it again it should now end up here which is the expected result right so we saw addition we saw uh, we saw a calculation stage we saw a decision stage as well so just examples we will do more complex later in the tutorial right so it's a good practice to save your workflow and blue prism has made it mandatory whenever you save it you must enter a summary of the change that you have made before saving otherwise it will not allow you to change not allow you to save when i click on save it will say your administrator requested that all changes must be having a summary right so let's summarize calculation and decision okay and then save changes now let's close it right I remember in the first time when we saw this my first process it did not have anything here in the edit summary or in the history version history so now since we have saved it once it is having an edit summary right so next time when you save it let's say we do again we open it again we do some changes uh, no changes basically just save it okay just saving it test revision 2 save now when i see here we have two revisions right we have two version of this particular process you can view the all the available processes but when you double click here only the latest one will be able will be opening and it will be you will be able to edit that right so let me make a change so that we are able to see the changes right so this one is data item C let's say and the type is number again let's save it so if I save it now test 3 right so this has data item C 
so test 3 when I open so you know I told you when we directly double click it will open automatically the latest save revision right so it has the data item C variable right now we can also see our first value by clicking on this edit summary right click and click on view so when you see it when you see it you see we don't have So when we right click and click on view, we can see that we don't have a data item over here, the data item C which we created in the latest version. But we will not be able to edit this, it will be read only. Okay. So this feature is basically used useful when you had made some changes and you want to compare in the uh, changes, what changes did you make and you want to basically compare your versions. So, that is when it is useful. So, you will not be able to edit the earlier versions, but you can still do a control A and you can copy and paste it to create a new process. Right. So, let us let's move forward then. Fair enough. Now, let us make a new process test process 2 okay click on next give a description test and finish now this process let's say I am not doing anything just clicking it just a start to end I saved it and I close it now to delete a process you can right click and do a delete you have to specify a deletion reason test reason let's say and delete it gets deleted but when we try to delete this my first process and I give a reason test reason and I do a delete sorry I clicked on cancel by mistake so when you do a delete it says an error occurred because this process has been run before and is required for audit that means if you have run a process already then you cannot delete it directly from the process studio so to do that you have to go to your systems in system you have to go to archiving in the left side in archiving you have to open your database logs right so here you can see all the logs right so you have to delete these logs for this particular process right once you have deleted then you go back to studio and you delete it it will get deleted right okay guys so we saw about uh, process studio we learned how to create a process we saw how to run a process we saw some basic examples using calculation and decision stage and we saw how to delete a process if it has never been run and if it has been run thank you guys for watching this video if you have any questions please put your questions in the comment section do like the video and subscribe to the channel thank you